Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial video. In this one, I'll be talking about three different ways to stream with the AudioBox USB 96. I've gone ahead and labeled the different chapters of this video, so you can easily skip ahead to the info that you need. There are four main chapters, the intro and hardware connections, setting up in OBS, how to set up in voice meter, and finally, mixing your stream audio with Studio One. The different chapters are listed in the description below. I got my AudioBox USB 96 as part of the Studio Bundle, which is an awesome set package that includes a mic, headphones, the interface of course, and even provides an XLR cable and desktop mic stand. Everything you need to get started whether you plan to record or live stream. First, a quick reminder on making sure you register your hardware and to download and install Universal Control. After registration, you'll also get access to your copy of Studio One Artist version along with other audio production software. So make sure to check your MyPersonas account. Now, I'm gonna quickly go over how to get everything connected. Connect the interface to the computer via USB and you should immediately see this power LED turn on. Opening Universal Control, you should also have the device listed as well. Next, make sure to turn down any gain and volume knobs on the interface before hooking up any other devices. If you're hooking up a pair of speakers, make sure they're turned off as well. The speaker and headphone connections go on the back. Let's hook up the HD7 headphones. And any mic and instrument connections will go on the combo inputs up front. Here, I'm connecting the included M7 condenser mic along with an electric guitar. I'll go ahead and turn on 48 volt phantom power because we'll need that for our condenser microphone. To hear yourself in the headphones, slowly turn up the gain and then the headphone volume. If you notice the red clip LED light up, that means you're using too much gain. So back that off and increase the headphone volume to make up for any volume drop. Basically, you want to have as much gain as needed without clipping. Also, make sure that this monitor mixer knob, which controls the blend of the audio coming in directly from the inputs and any audio coming from the computer is set to 50%. If you have studio monitors connected, turn up the main volume to hear audio in the speakers. Now, let's start with something simple, sending audio from the interface directly into OBS. This is pretty straightforward. All you have to do in OBS is to add an audio input capture and select the AudioBox 96 as the device. There is one setting you need to change though, because by default, inputs 1 and 2 will go to the left and right channels separately. Hello, check one, two, three, check one, two, three. As you heard, my vocal is on the left and the guitar is on the right. What you have to do to fix this is to go to the advanced audio properties and tick this mono checkbox. And now we have both inputs centered. Hello, check one, two, three, check one, two, three. As you can imagine, you'll have little control over the audio signal with this sort of setup. You will basically use the gain knobs as your volume control to balance the levels of the two audio signals. Within OBS, there are a few things you can do to tweak the broadcast audio. There are audio filters available in OBS, which will even allow you to use VST2 plugins. So consider learning how to use those. But take note, that you'll be processing both audio channels together and not individually, which is not ideal. To have a little bit more control, let's use a free third-party software. Take note, this one's for Windows users only. Download and install Voice Meter Banana. The link is in the description below. This software is a virtual mixer that allows us a bit more control over our broadcast audio. Let's set it up to use the AudioBox 96. Click here in the A1 drop-down to select a hardware audio device and look for the ASIO audio box. Make sure you are selecting the ASIO driver mode and not any of the other options. Next, let's go into the menu and into system settings. Here, let's patch the inputs on the interface into channel strips in the virtual mixer. Set these two inputs to use 1 and 2. On the input channel strips, You'll notice that the audio signal is coming into the left channel only, because these are normally stereo channels, 
but since we only patched one hardware input to each, we're only getting a signal on one side. Clicking mono will fix that. Now, on the channels, also check that the A1 and B1 buttons are turned on. A1 sends this channel to our hardware outputs, and B1 sends this channel to one of the virtual outputs, which we will use to get the audio into OBS. In OBS, let's add an audio input capture. Let's call it voice meter. And we'll select voice meter output as the device. Take note, there are a couple of these voice meter outputs, so make sure you choose the correct one. With that in place, we can already see the signal going into OBS. Hello, check one, two, three, check one, two, three. With voice meter, you'll have a little bit more control over your audio. You'll have independent control of level, a bit of EQ, panning, and even a simple compressor and gate for the input channels. Now regarding monitoring. You can choose to listen to the processed signal by turning the monitor mixer knob clockwise all the way towards the playback side. This will let you hear the audio coming out of voice meter. Depending on your computer's performance, you may encounter a considerable amount of signal delay or latency. You can go ahead and lower the device block size in universal control to try and minimize this. The lowest value you can select here will depend on your system's specifications. So just experiment a bit to see what settings will work best. If you feel the latency is too much for you to perform comfortably, you can always go ahead and just monitor from the hardware alone. Turning the mixer knob fully counterclockwise will let you hear the unprocessed direct signals from the inputs. One of the best ways to mix your stream audio, especially if you're doing musical performances, is by using a DAW. I'll show you one of the ways to do this, by using Studio One and a free plugin called Restream. I'll be putting the link in the description below, and again, this is for Windows users only. In Studio One, just set up the audio box as you normally would. I've set up a song file with two channels for a vocal mic and electric guitar. I've also gone ahead and added the plugins and routed the effects that I want to use. This is one of the many advantages of mixing in a DAW, having access to all these audio processing tools. Now, to get audio from Studio One to OBS, we're going to use Restream. So here in Studio One, I'm going to add the plugin as a post fader insert. This way, I can use the main fader to adjust the broadcast volume. Here in the plugin window, make sure to choose Send, select Local Broadcast, and set the audio channels to 2. Now let's set things up in OBS. Here, let's add an audio input capture. For the device, and this is something you might have to experiment on a bit, you'll need to choose an unused stereo device. For me, Having voice meter installed and using one of its virtual outs works really well. You can also use any unused stereo inputs on your computer, like the line level input. Just make sure that there is no actual audio coming from the device, because all the audio we need will be coming through the Restream plugin. This device we're selecting is basically just a dummy device that OBS requires you to have. For this demo, I'm just going to go and use voice meter, since this has worked consistently well for me. Now let's right click on this audio input capture and then go into filters. Click on this plus icon and select VST2. And here in the drop down selection, we're going to choose Restream Standalone. Then set it up to receive. Restream is simply routing audio from one instance of the plugin to another. Here we can see that we have a signal now coming into the plugin and into OBS. And when I make changes to the mix in Studio One, this reflects clearly in OBS. Check, one, two, three. Check, one, two, three. Okay, so there you have it. Three different ways to set up your Audio Box 96 for live streaming. As a final note, Make sure to check your audio video sync, especially when using voice meter or a DAW to mix your audio. If you need to adjust the sync offset, go to the advanced audio properties in OBS, and here you'll have access to the offset controls. The exact amount of offset you'll need will vary depending on your system. So just experiment with different values. Again, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.